up on the world right now. I mean, I'm more local politics. My organizations deal with local stuff that I work on and volunteer for, whatever. And I'm not up on the world politics per se because, I mean, I just would rather deal with what's in my front yard and in my neighborhood than getting involved. I mean, there's only so little that you can do out in the world politics. I mean, especially like if China and Japan, I read in the, one of those newspapers this morning where they are trying to, because otherwise they're, they're like, and if that happens, they hold our debts. <laughs> and we can be like, oh shoot, and, and Russia holds a lot of our debts. But if our economy crashes, then their economy crashes, and but yeah, yeah. it's all egos and well, I was born and raised in Portland, and I've been thinking about leaving and go, like moving to Seattle, but I just, I love Portland so much, and um, it's been a hard decision. Uh, I'm a senior this year, so, you know, it's that time when you've got to find a job, and um, I'm a business major, so we're all kind of competing against each other to get that job, and it's just interesting. Like today, you wake up and the air is so crisp and everything just feels right. But most days we forget to remember that, right? I kind of like to talk about being homeless. I'm 74 years of age. And it's really no Sunday school picnic being out here during the daytime and sleeping under bridges at night and not knowing whether you're going to wake up in the morning or not. Tell us your thoughts. Um, well, my name is Aaron, um, and I too just got out of prison. Um, I've been out for, today's my fifth day. Um, through a series of uh, poor decisions, uh, I ended up um, deep into my addiction and uh, selling drugs, and um, I um, got to do treatment in prison. Um, and uh, not everyone that goes to treatment in prison um, takes the opportunity to change their life and want to change their life, but I did. Okay, well, my name is Matt, and I've lived here since 2008, um, and uh, I live with HIV, and I have since I was diagnosed, since 2008, and uh, about nine months ago, I found out that the medication that I was on uh, does not correlate with people that have bipolar disorder. Uh, and so it causes psychotic episodes. Um, and they didn't find that out until about 2012. And in 2010, I out of nowhere uncharacteristically stabbed someone. Um, so I did three years in prison, learning all about the prison system and how terrible that is. And that's a completely different story um, because of this medication, which I've now been switched off of. Um, so now I'm working on filing for clemency and all of that stuff. So if you're taking a tripla and you have bipolar disorder, don't take a tripla. Talk to your doctor because you shouldn't be on it. The FDA banned that in 2012. I'm from North Carolina. I came over here with my grandson. He's 23 years old. He left day before yesterday around 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Poor dark. Tell him he'd be back. I've not seen him. I don't know where he is. I just love Portland like this. Yeah, yeah. It's a hard. Lot of challenges going forward though, a lot of indecision about what to do next. Yeah, I mean, what if I make the wrong choice? You know? Yeah. It's so whimsical here, Portland. It's yeah. just. Yeah. Have you been just, to Seattle? I visited, and my, my experience in the area that I'd be working in was great. I loved, I loved it because it reminded me of Portland. So why would I ever leave, right? Um, but I, I haven't lived anywhere else, really. So um, 
But there was one thing I noticed when I was walking across the street. Um, I was crossing near Pioneer Square in Seattle. And down there, it's, it's pretty busy, especially around like five o'clock traffic time. And someone honked at me. And that was the first time I had been honked at crossing the, like, you don't really get that in Portland ever. Um, so, I don't know, my heart's pretty on fire for this city, but I don't know, I, I don't think change is bad either. I think I'd end up here in the end, but that's all I wanted to talk about. I have a daughter that was living in Mountain View, California, and she moved the 26th of last month and moved to uh, Washougal, Washington. I cannot find her. Uh, so it's been one obstacle after another. I figured it might be best to try to make it here rather than, than stay up there not knowing where she was because uh, at least I had my grandson now. I like to say I don't know where he is. So I was like struggling to keep my bipolar disorder in check and it turns out that I was taking a medication that was exacerbating every cycle. Um, so as you can imagine, you're trying to to get a hold on, on mood changes um, and you're trying to put a roof and a ceiling, you know, on, on mania and depression and uh and that roof and that ceiling you know the, the roof keeps blowing off and the and the floor has a trap door basically is what it seems like my name's margo and i come from vancouver canada and i'm here in portland and i've happened to enjoy the week it has absolutely been beautiful weather and i've had so much fun the portland um market today has been so much fun people are very kind and considerate and thoughtful went to the zoo yesterday and had so much fun and we wandered around the downtown core doing a self-walk and we ran into so many people who stopped and talked to us and helped us find our way. It's a very kind and considerate city. Thank you for your hospitality. So I am a senior at the University of Portland and I'm graduating this next May. So I'm having troubles thinking about what I want to do when I graduate. And I kind of want to go abroad. But it's scary. I don't know what I want to do. Part of me wants to go to South America and just experience the culture and the life there. And part of me is saying I should stay in Portland and use the resources that the University of Portland provides for me and get a good job. And it's a really hard decision. Have um, you traveled before? I have. I actually studied abroad in Spain last fall. Um, so that was about four months, and it was a really great experience. I loved it. Um, just the people and such a different lifestyle. I mean, you meet a 19-year-old that's not going to get out of prison until they're 40 for a mistake they made so early in their life, and you realize that their life is wasted. Um, that's a humbling experience, and, and it makes you question morality in general. And it, are we over-incarcerating people? Um, are we are we doing things to people that's not rehabilitation? Instead, it's just punitive. And I, I ran into a lot of that. And I ran into a lot of people that work in this particular industry that they're there to make people's times tough instead of making them better. Um, and it was just really unfortunate. But um, I helped build some music rooms and provide some therapy there. and. Um, helped uh, get some stock HIV medications because people were running out of their pills so I helped find some federal laws so that the, the state could get some grants to do that so I made the place better than how I found it um, which was what I wanted to do so the experience wasn't in vain and I, I emerged a better person but still you know something I shouldn't have had to do but whatever it's it, it was for the better, and maybe I did some things that wouldn't have been done if I hadn't have gone there. I guess what I wanted to say was just that there is hope for people with addiction out there. Um, I am now in recovery, and um, NA is a cornerstone of my life, and um, I am so grateful that I got the opportunity uh, for a timeout provided by Multnomah County. Uh, and uh, Judge Christopher Marshall, and um, 
I am so grateful today to be back in my city, Portland, Oregon, where I'm from. And um, I, I love this place and uh, I'm just, I feel great. And um, for any of you out there that are struggling with addiction, um, there is help for you. I really want to visit Machu Picchu. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amazing so place. that's my first place. Besides that, I'm not really sure. How do you think you'll reach your choice? Just let it mull around in your mind until it kind of comes to you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And seeing, so I'm a double major with business and Spanish. So I'm going to see um, if there's any company that really catches my eye and I really want to stay for that. Otherwise, I'm going to start looking for programs probably this winter break um, that may offer some kind of some kind of like teaching English or something like that so I can get like a little bit of money while I'm abroad and be able to kind of support myself or stay there for a little bit of time. So we'll see. We'll see. About two years ago, I stopped telling people my age, my sign, like my, my horoscope, my zodiac symbol, my job. I, I stopped telling everyone these, these fundamental things because I, like, I feel like people have these subconscious preconceptions about who they think you are based on your job, where you live, what you do, you know. And that's not who you are. Your job, your, your clothes, how much money you make, it's not who you are. Like, even your emotions, your thoughts, those aren't who you are. And so by eliminating all of those false pretenses, I am giving everyone a chance to really get to know me and not know me based on who they think I am, if that makes sense. You. Yeah. You are so infinite beyond the wildest imagination of this physical form sharing a life with everything space and time no limits um, we are all we're we're essentially the same thing you know and i can say that because i see it in me i say that to you because i can see it in me i see within it's infinite and even science tells us this, you go into the smallest bits of everything and it just goes on forever. And same in the other direction, in the macrocosm. So we are infinite and we're kind of like in the middle in a way. Get one foot in both worlds, the, the little and the, and the big, the macrocosm, the microcosm. Yeah, and you are the infinite. I am the infinite, you are the infinite, you are the infinite, we're all the infinite and that's the greatest thing that I've that I've had happen to me in my life is that recognition of of divinity within each of us, you know, and really like yeah, it's all there is to it. Life is beautiful. Give thanks for you guys. Thank That's you. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm satisfied that if I can get him back with me and all, we're waiting until I get uh, my social security that will be the day before Thanksgiving. So that's gonna be quite a Thanksgiving. Oh boy. It, it really is. Uh, and uh, I hope with that money we can find some place that we can get and uh, start all over. I hope you do. And that's what we're hoping for. Good luck with that. Mm -hmm. Nice talking with you. Nice talking with you.